everybody. I'd like to show you how to oil size a very large canvas like this. What I have here is a 55 and a half inch by 83 inch canvas. So this is fairly large canvas by one and a half inches deep. And what I'm going to use to oil um, ground this canvas as opposed to acrylic ground. You know, there's various acrylics that you can get. So what you've seen me do in other videos, I've added gambling PVA size to this canvas. I put three coats on this side and I put one coat on this side and then I stretched it later. I have other videos on YouTube where I show you how I stretch a large canvas. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply gambling oil ground to this large canvas. And it's done much like you would do with acrylic gesso ground, but it's a little bit different. So I'm going to show that. Okay, now what Gamlin says is add about 5% um, Gamsol to your oil ground to thin it out. But what I found is that that's just really, really, really thick. And you almost need like a squeegee or a trowel to put it on like you're, you know, putting plaster of, 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 uh, on a wall, you know, a compound on a, on a, on a sheetrock wall, <laughs> you know, when you're sheetrocking a wall. So what I recommend is to put anywhere between 10 and 20% Gamsol in your ground, at least for the first coat. Um, that way it allows the... The, the, um, the coat to kind of sink in and you level off a little bit better into the PVA size layer that's on top of this canvas. In addition to that, it allows the, um, you can paint it with a bristle brush. This is a three inch bristle brush or two and a half inch bristle brush. You can just get it into the, to the, to the mesh of the canvas much better than you can if you just had it with just 5%. It's just simply too thick. This stuff is as thick as, uh, it's really thick. I mean, I'm trying to think of what how thick it is. I mean, it's the consistency of um, of uh, pudding. No, and no, it's way thicker than pudding because it's just hard to move. So it's like Play-Doh. It's almost like a, a more liquid Play-Doh. So it's really, really thick. And so to get it so it's more or less like a milkshake, you want to add, you can get that 5% Gamsol will make it Kind of like milkshake, but still you're going to get streaks in your brush. It's going to pick up textures from the brush. It's just not good. Now they say put it in and kind of mix, squiggle it in, but I just found it's just too much. And it binds just fine with my smaller canvases that I've done when I go up to 20%. Now you might want to compromise not at 5%, but not at 20, but somewhere around 15% or 10%. That's fine. But you know, you have to discover, you have to experiment to discover exactly the, uh, <clears throat> the, 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 the thickness you want to apply on your canvas. Now, what I do is you see, I have my canvas turned back side up and the front side down because I like to paint the ground on the, around the staples and cover all the staples first and do all the sides. Then what I do is I flip it and then finally I will paint with the oil ground, the actual business side. And then what I do is I use little push pins, which I have here, to kind of sit the, uh, the canvas up on these little apple boxes. What I have down here below, these little boxes on each corner. These are used on film sets and photographers use them a lot to either step up on and get to some equipment or to, to brace a piece of equipment or put a, a small tripod on it or something like that, or to, to equalize actors' heights. They have them in different sizes. I like to use the full apple boxes for this because it gives me like a, a nice platform to work on. And uh, so with that said, I'm going to get right to it. Okay, also you need a nice, I have a two and a half inch bristle brush that can push into the um, mesh really nice with a nice stiff bristle brush. Um, now, you could do this with rollers, squeegees, sponges, rags, you know, whatever you want to apply this with. Um, I would suggest for people who just want to just follow the gambling rules and do it exactly the way they said, you're going to use a stiff squeegee for that. <clears throat> okay, so right now I've already emptied this jar to about half full so that I can add 
because what I'm going to do is just add, I'm going to use all of this on this particular application. So I'm going to add about 20% more of Gamsol. And just by kind of eyeballing what's already in there, I'm going to fill it up to about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch more with Gamsol. Okay. And I'm going about three quarters an inch. And you want to have a little stirrup. And I just cut these little pieces off with my table saw and then I'm going to stir and mix this gamsol and you can see this is the I almost have to use my full hand to stir this it is just so thick and then once the gamsol starts to penetrate into the oil and that's some vigorous stirring that has to happen here I think the most work of putting this on is actually this process here stirring the gamsol into and I have about 15% cam salt added. I don't think I went quite up to 20%. But then again, I could have, it could be very close, somewhere between 15 and 20%. You know, of course, it's not exactly because I didn't use any, any measuring devices. I simply just had my empty my can, so I have only to, into another cam, uh, oil ground can, so I have about 50%. Uh, of the of the uh, oil ground in there already give me some room so I can add some gamsol and then that way I could just use the regular can that it comes with to mix and stir and now finally I'm getting it now that this is penetrating into the oil I'm getting it the consistency of a very very thick milkshake at this point now it's not a thin so I'm about 15% now I could add to get this to a Thinner milkshake consistency, and a lot of times people do like this consistency when they are actually are mixing, uh, you know, when they're using acrylic. <laughs> this is the basic the thickness. If you can see this, you see how it drops off there. This is basically the thickness of it, and I think I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna add just a smidge more just to get it a little bit thinner. Okay, now I don't have any lines on the can. I'm just basically guesstimating about 20% now. So now I'm up from 15 to about 20%. Now I do have some more oil ground over there that I can add to it, just in case I went a little too far and it gets a little too, uh, you know, it's not milkshake, but it's now like, a, say, a melted milkshake consistency. I don't want that. I really do want it to be like a normal, like a, like a milkshake consistency, just a little bit, you know, like, I mean, not like the Wendy's milkshakes, but the McDonald's milkshake, <laughs> you know? Okay, so stir, 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 and that's the whole key here is just to really, really, really spend some time mixing and stirring this gambling oil with the Gamsol. Get it nice and there. Now, it's kind of behaving like normal acrylic, it's kind of like at that consistency. And that that's the way I like to paint it on anyway with the acrylic. So now I'm gonna do a little bit more stirring to make sure it's thoroughly mixed up with the Gamsol that all of the particles of the oil that's made to bind with the PVA size, is made to bind with whatever surface you have, making sure that the Gamsol it's really acting as a thinner. That's all it is, is thinning out the paint. Eventually, this Gamsol will evaporate out or catalyze out of the oil and disappear into the atmosphere, leaving just the oil on the surface. So it's starting to get a little bit smoother. I do like that little cream or like um, pudding kind of consistency. Or like cake mix consistency, I should say. Okay. And then I'm just going to wipe my, my little stick off here. That's pretty good. And I'm just going to hold the can in one hand and get my brush. I'm left-handed, so I'm painting with my left hand and holding it the can with my right hand and then I'm just going to go right over top all my staples and I could pour this into a bigger jar because I do have a two and a half inch brush 
this opening is about two with about three inches so I got about a half an inch but sometimes your brush is a little afraid and now what I'm doing is painting the the steel is going on very very thick it is really covering very 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 well and one coat of this even thin down like this is equal to about two coats of normal acrylic gesso it really is and I'm putting it on you can see I'm I'm not being stingy in the way I paint it on I'm not dry brushing it in at all I'm really putting it on rather you know with a lot of material and then what I do is I just brush it into the fabric forcing it the juicy material that I took the time to mix really nice forcing it into the fabric and of course I'm just working right now going around working on the back and the sides of my painting When I do it, I like to let it go two days so it's the same texture that if I wait two hours or four hours with <laughs> my normal acrylic gesso, that's it's kind of very dry so I can just add my other thing on. And I'm used to kind of painting one layer into the next that way. So I actually, uh, not what gambling say overnight, not what it says on a can overnight, 24 hours, 48 hours. That's basically what I would go with and I would lean more towards 48 hours than 24. So now that I have this, what I'm going to do is go to one side of my painting. And I think I have a little bit more room over this side. And I kind of build these little cross hairs into my painting. So I'm just going to grab it like that. Then I'm going to kind of walk over, put it on an angle, walk over to my apple box is there. Now, what I'm going to do at this point is get these little push pins so that my canvas is not sitting directly. I do not want my canvas to sit directly. And this is why I wear this shirt here because I get paint all over my clothes. So these are what I call my paint clothes. And what I do is I just push this push pin into the masonite. And then sometimes it don't work on the masonite, so I'm going to push it into the wood because the masonite is pretty hard. Okay, and then I'm going to find, I'm going to lower this down a little smidge until it's close. And then I'm going to just sit it, sit it on a push pin. Okay, you get a little oil on you. You could wear gloves, <laughs> but um, I'm the type of artist. I don't wear gloves. I get into my medium and I just wash it off with soap immediately after I finish a certain procedure. Okay, same thing with this side. I'm going to pick it up, push this into the wood, not the masonite. And that's just enough to kind of give it about a quarter of an inch clearance so that um, it won't stick to the apple boxes and also I don't mess up the finish on the other side. Now, even though I might have Fingerprints in it. This stuff levels pretty good, and I never really get any bad fingerprints or anything in it when I do that. So I'm going to take some more push pins, and I'll go to the opposite side now, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pick it up, push the push pin into the wood, then I'm going to sit it down. I try to find a place in the middle of the apple box just in case. So I don't, you know, if I move something around, it doesn't really cause too much of an issue. Okay. Push this push pin in, reposition my apple box, boom. Now this whole painting is sitting up uh, a quarter inch off of the apple boxes on top of the push pins. So that's my, my little cleats or my little legs. And you can see how this kind of runs a little bit. You can see along the edge here. Uh, when I pick that up, it's, it's, it's thick, but it's, it has some viscosity to it. it has, the paint has some movement because I put 20% Gamsol, I mean Gamsol in there. 
So now I'm going to really get to the business of painting the actual uh, top layer, the business layer of the painting. And um, I had a little chip or something that was on my surface there. Just want to get that off. And then I'm just going to carefully go in with this first layer on top of the PBA size and just, just start applying this. Now again, this first layer is, is like I said, I have 20%. Now, if I go back with the next layer, it probably will only be 10%, you know? But I think five is just a little bit too, I don't think I will ever go with five because it's just a little bit too thick of a paint for me. Um, I like to get some of the texture of the of the canvas in my painting, but I also don't like big heavy brush strokes. You can see I'm painting up and down a long section of the painting here. And what I don't want is any heavy brush strokes. And what I'm trying my best to do is not let crumbs get into the paint, but also to smooth out my brush strokes really nice and smooth. Now, what I will do is with, when it's, and the thing about it, it takes so long before you can sand it. It's going to take, now Gamlin said it takes five to, to five to five days to seven days, or those are 24 hour periods, by the way. But in reality, it takes three, two to three weeks for these to dry. And give this not overnight, but at least 48 hours. You don't do sandpaper because it will scratch the surface. Use pumice paper or emery paper or jewelers, kind of like jewel, which is kind of like jewelers sandpaper. And use like 600, 700 grit, something fairly fine that won't leave, that won't leave any kind of, um, pronounced marks uh, in your in your uh, paint layer. So if you're going to sand between layers, I usually use a really coarse sandpaper like number 60, regular like from Lowe's, the hardware store sandpaper for my um, acrylic because it really it just doesn't all I'm really doing is lightly sanding. I'm just taking off. I want to quickly take off any dingleberries or any imperfections. However, when um, when I'm working with um, the oils, like I say, the oils just don't uh, don't dry as fast. So, and since it's still semi moist. If you use that really rough sandpaper to kind of quickly get the dingleberries out, what happens is you can have some scratches, scratch marks from high to high grit sandpaper, regular like sandpaper, hardware store sandpaper. So use jewelers, emery paper or pumice paper or something like that and use a pretty high grit, you know, three to six hundred should do it um you know fine sandpaper fine pumice paper i should say or emery paper and so this half a can of the 32 ounce can filled to about 20 percent gamsol as you can see will cover a 55 and a half inch by 83 inch canvas and I'm getting pretty good coverage out of this. And I'm putting it on fairly thick. I mean, I'm just letting it get in there. Usually when I'm making a canvas, I do not rush. Because this is the foundation. What's the use? A lot of artists, they focus on, <clears throat> they focus on the painting and the painting layers. But they don't focus on the ground layer. This is the ground floor. This is the very most important 
layer of your painting. <laughs> uh, PVA size and oil ground is a very good combination for longevity. Now, if you're making paintings for practice, or you're just making paintings, you don't know if it's going to be a masterpiece, you just don't have that kind of confidence in your work yet, uh, you don't know if it's going to be good or not, you don't know if you want to waste extra money, just use the acrylic. Just use acrylic. Because there's no need of uh, painting, you know, going through the time. You got to invest some time. You got to be patient to put down these oil grounds like this. You're not going to put down an oil ground in a rush and expect that bad boy to be done, like I say, in five to seven days. Don't set yourself up that way. <laughs> it's just, you're not going to like it, you know. You're going to want to paint. You might even have a commission job like I did on an oil ground that I did. And you tell the person, oh, I'll be done in a week. And then it takes you two weeks or three weeks just to start because you're waiting on your, literally, on your oil, the paint to dry, your oil ground to dry. And like I say, gambling, you, you read the box and say, oh, yeah, if it takes only five days and it should take me about two or three days to paint this, okay, I'm good. Well, that's if you're going to sit down and paint. And if you're an acrylic painter, you probably can paint your painting in two or three days. Um, I'm an oil painter. I literally have to wait till the paint dries. So you know what I'm going to do? It will probably take me, when I paint something in acrylic, I can do it five times faster than the same exact image that I paint in oil. However, the experience with oil that I have is so much better. I can get to what I want to get to, in other words, faster, quicker, better. And if you feel good about what you're painting, the painting generally turns out better. Just as my experience. Okay, so that's it. I basically had this first coat on. I'm just trying to get it smooth. I'm trying to get any brush marks out, any hairs from the brush that might have gotten into my paint. I'm trying to check and expect for that get that out that might be in a pva size so i'm gonna just paint smooth over that okay so there we have it now when you clean your brushes you're going to clean your brushes with gamsol um, and soap and water and warm soap and water that's all you should need and so happy painting to you if you're going to do a large size painting uh, the only other step is to let this dry for 48 hours that's what I recommend. Gamlin says overnight, I say 48 hours. Paint the next coat in, do the same thing. Flip it, paint the backside. Generally, I don't paint the backside on the second coat because I only apply two coats. The backside only gets one because it's the backside. I do paint uh, in gallery wrap, so I do will hit the sides a second time, but not the back. So let this set up for 48 hours to not paint the sides and the top. Then I let that dry for three weeks. Uh, so if I paint it on, say for example, today is Monday, I come back on one Monday goes back, that's one week, one Monday goes by, that's two weeks. Then finally the last Monday, and say for example, if it's nine o'clock, at nine o'clock, then I'm looking and touching the painting and getting ready with some emery, some, some 600 emery paper, sand down any imperfections, try to get any bumps or waves or brush marks that I might not want out of it and once that is nice i say okay now sometimes when you saw me paint the pve size i don't know if it's a pva size that causes when you stretch because i stretch really tight i put a lot of muscle into stretching my paintings however uh i noticed sag happens because what i did was i stretched a raw canvas and it's a cotton duck canvas it's a like a, a 13 ounce weight. So it's a fairly thick weight. I don't even work with anything less than 13 ounce weight. I don't work with any seven ounce or anything. 10, 13 ounce is my minimum. And so I pulled really, really tight and got it tight as a drum. Boom, it was a high pitch drum, so it was really tight. And I noticed after I put the size on, I didn't really notice anything, but definitely I noticed after I got the second coat of oil on, and it started to dry, I noticed that the paint started, to, the canvas started to sag, there was no drum, it was wobble in it. And, but 
That was only after five days, like Gamlin said, to seven days. But I noticed I, had, I did another little test canvas where I got a smaller canvas, I stretched it, the same sag was in there. And what happens is I let that dry for three weeks and the, it slowly tightened back up, believe it or not. It wasn't as tight as boom, like a high pitched drum, but it was tight enough to paint on. It was actually a low pitched drum, but it really wasn't quite a drum, but it was just a low pitch kind of thug but it was tight enough to be almost drum-like and acceptable. So that's something that you can do. Now, what I have done this is simply uh, take one side of the staples out, you know, the, the top and the sides, on, and then leave the staples in on the bottom, top, and sides, and then re-stretch after the oil has set up. And that may crack a little bit along the edge. So what you can do is just touch that up with either a little painter's uh, titanium white or some more gambling oil ground. You could just touch that up a little bit and let, then you got to let that dry or just be sure not to paint over that while you're painting for about three weeks, but let it dry for three more weeks. So that could take up to a month and a half. So um, what I did was I painted it with artist titanium white um, and, it, and I put it on fairly thick and that took about two days to dry or three days. And that was pretty good. So. That basically painted over the same as the oil ground. Uh, the paintbrush couldn't tell. When I went over the part, there was just titanium white. It was just little creases here and there. It wasn't the whole side, but just a couple of places, little fault lines. And I was able to kind of smooth that out right on the edge. It was on the back edge. It wasn't on the front edge. It's like, because you pull it and make it tighter. So that was my solution for that. So if you're working with PV, PVA size, gambling PVA size, if you're working with Gamsol, that's one of my solutions. Now, this is with 12 ounce cotton duck. This will work in somewhat fine grain, not too heavy, not too thick, but just right there at a sort of to the fine side. Uh, if you're gonna work with linen, whether it be coarse linen or fine linen, grain texture, does the same thing. Just with linen, it's stiffer, so you're gonna have to use more muscle. If you don't have muscle, teach somebody that does. <laughs> if you wanna get these big sizes, or just hire somebody who builds them. Maybe contact me, I'll build you some and ship them to you. All right, over and out, I'll see you on the next video. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to like and subscribe to this video, and then let some other people know. Share this video, let some other people know about me, and I, get my, uh, uh, I like to get my subscriptions up so I can start streaming live and going to some galleries and places like that on my mobile phone on YouTube. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.